Christ where? In you. Christ in you. Christ where? That's quite an experience. That the Christ in you. What did Christ accomplish upon earth? What did he do? Now that Christ is spiritually in you. What can you do? How much can you believe? See, the world will always laugh at this. Well, they ought to. That's so in the word. Because the natural man receiveth not what? It's foolishness unto him. The reason it's foolishness unto him, he's a fool. You know, and a fool, everything's foolishness to him. But to those born again of God's Spirit who have Christ in them, they know it. Look at it. Which is Christ in you. Christ in you. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. Boy, what a fantastic privilege. That we may present every man perfect in Christ. Wherefore I also labor striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. You know, that's it. That's redemptive living. It's what I referred to at times as vital union with Jesus Christ. You see, when the word, when this word of God gains preeminence in our minds, this word, then Christ gains preeminence in our lives. So when the word gains the preeminence, that Christ gains preeminence in our living. Remember in Romans 10, 9, it says, if you confess with your mouth, what? The Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Saved. Jesus as Lord in our lives is in reality nothing more or nothing less than the Lordship of his word. When the word gains the ascendancy, to the end that it completely dominates my thinking, then the word is no longer a doctrine or a theological argument or a theological tenet. The word then is life with a capital L, a capital I, a capital F, and a capital E. Then we are legally clasped in the hand of omnipotent love. And we are basically just orbited into the glory way of the fullness of God when we believe. You will remember, without looking it up, I am quite confident, the record in John 1, 16, where it says, of his fullness, we have all, all we have received of Christ's fullness, all we have received. Remember in Ephesians 3, the record where it says, filled with all the fullness of God. That's in Ephesians 3, 19. In Ephesians 3, 13, it says, how long until we all come in the unity, the knowledge of that one body unto the fullness of the stature of Christ Jesus? That's fullness, ladies and gentlemen. 
That is a tremendous thing. Look at Romans 8. Romans 8. <laughs> Look at verse 29. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many what? Then Jesus Christ is my brother and yours. That's not a bad brother. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also what? And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also what? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us what? All things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Shall God who justifieth? Who is he that condemneth? Shall Christ that died, yea, rather that's risen again, who's even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession, what? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it's written, for thy sake we're killed all the day long, we're counted as sheep for the slaughter. No, sir, we're not. In all these things, verse 37, we are more than conquerors. And the word mo words more than is super, super conquerors. We are super conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded. And you know what it is to be persuaded? It means to be persuaded. Not one iota of a doubt convinced beyond any doubt. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our what? Oh, glory. That fantastic. What a revelation on the legal and the experiential aspects of our redemption. <laughs> you know, there's a record in the Gospel of Matthew. You don't particularly have to look it up. You'll all know it when I quote it to you. Matthew 3, 17. Where of Jesus God said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Remember that record? And this wonderful Son, Jesus Christ, in whom God was well pleased, did some fantastic things for us both legally and experientially, for it is Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's why in Colossians 2.11, it says that we were circumcised in him. In Romans 6.3, it says we were baptized in him. In Galatians 2.20, we were crucified with him. In Colossians 2.12, we were buried with him. In 1 Peter 1.18, it says we were redeemed with him. In Romans 3.24, it says we were justified in him. In Romans 5.16-18, it says we were made the righteousness of God in him. In 1 Corinthians 6.11, it says we were sanctified in him. In 1 Corinthians 3.17, it says we were made holy. In Colossians 2.13, it says we were made alive in him. And in Colossians 2.6, it says we were raised up and seated with him in the heavenlies. Yes, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am what? Well, please. May God be able to say of us, these are my beloved sons 
in whom I am well pleased.